Hey folks, welcome. Today we're going to do a mixed media journal page featuring a Roy Cycle Botanical Fall paper as well as a Dina Wakely mixed media journal that includes the burlap pages in them. So what we're going to do is we're just going to basically cut out the piece we wanted and I've taken the liberty of doing that. And if you look at these, these are absolutely gorgeous. Um, Roy Cycle Treasures does beautiful um, digital assemblages and creates these wonderful little pieces. Each one of them is absolutely perfect for journal pages as well as small scale projects that are roughly eight by 10, if not smaller. I mean, obviously you can cut that down to something as small as like say a four by six. So it's really quite practical. So I went ahead and cut this little piece out here, which just happens to be the little sparrow up here. And <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and use the white paint you could use white gesso, you could use white paint, whatever you want. I'm just using my Amy Howard at home one step paint. Oops, and I just realized I don't have a light on. Let me go ahead and switch that real quick for you. There we go. So the one step paint is really practical because it's used for furniture painting, but I'm one of those kinds of gals that I hate having to buy a bunch of different paint for a bunch of different reasons. So I mix them all. Um, one step is meant to be basically a one step paint where you don't have to prime or do a top coat to your paint on furniture. It's just easy to go. And But that standard, it's fantastic for mixed media as well because it's nice and thick and you get really great coverage. So what I did is I actually put a piece of parchment paper behind the burlap page. That way, if there's any seep through, it's nice and protected, and I don't have to worry about it affecting the other pages in the journal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a fairly liberal amount of the paint, get it good and kind of squidged into all of those textural elements on the burlap page. That way, once we do all of our other additions on here, they have something really solid to stick to. But I taped off the edges so that we have the gorgeous burlap frayed edges once the tape is removed. And you know, I love burlap. It's just a gorgeous texture. Another um, fun element or addition to a page. So I'm just gonna go ahead and speed that up for you guys and we'll go ahead and dry it as well. Okay, so all of this um, burlap is painted with white paint and has thoroughly dried. Now we're gonna go ahead and decoupage down our sweet little bird scene here. I am going to wet tear the edges so that they all kind of fit within this border. So just grab yourself any kind of a brush, really doesn't matter. And it doesn't even matter if this line is super, super clean. In fact, I kind of like the very organic effect of the torn edge. It just looks really attractive to me. And I can see the blue tape kind of through so I know where my border is. All right, now we can go ahead and decoupage that down. Most of you guys are probably pretty seasoned pros when it comes to decoupage. And there are a lot of really, really great ways to apply it. Um, Mod Podge, Golden, Fluid Matte Medium, whatever you happen to have, just some sort of glue. I am using my Amy Howard Matte Top Coat. Again, it's one of those things where you use what you happen to have handy. And I use these all very interchangeably. Uh, I come from the generation that started all of our decoupage with napkins. So I just sort of feel like as long as you have a decent amount of adhesive underneath and then you're very, very gentle in your brushing on top, you should get a really good and well adhered image. I also don't mind, there are times like if I'm doing furniture, I don't want there to be bubbles or any kind of imperfections, but when it comes to mixed media pages, I embrace the imperfections. I think that they look more interesting. So just do what comes natural to you. And I am working in stages. It's a lot easier for me to adhere this if I do in sections, but if you prefer to use something like a gel medium, 
and you want to just kind of cover the entire page, you totally can. You know, the gel medium has a longer open time, so there's a bit more flexibility. Okay, before we stamp, I'm gonna do a little bit of distressing. I really don't want this to be super, super perfect, so I'm just gonna kind of come in here and be a little bit aggressive. Like, I don't even mind, you know what I mean? It's okay if a little came off of the bird, and that might be kind of scary, and you know, you're just thinking, um, isn't that what you wanted? You wanted that to be there? But I really, 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 like my page to look nice and old. You can still see it's a bird. You can still see this one nice and clearly. So that's totally okay. Okay, so the distressing is good. Now we're gonna go ahead and come in with the Reverie stamp. And this, again, this is an IOD stamp. It's a two sheet stamp. So they have the angel is reversed and there are a lot of like really, really beautiful elements. Oops, that's kind of hard to see. So you can kind of see the really ornate flame, uh, frame with the cherubs on it. And you have all of these really great flourishes and vines. These are all fantastic borders. And that's basically how I'm going to utilize this one today. I'm going to use this sort of like swag of flowers in this pretty little shape down here at the bottom. So I'm just going to go ahead and peel off that specific piece. And I'm just going to use the other side of the stamp sheet that it comes with and if you've never used an iod stamp before they really are intended to be um home decor stamps but really they're good for everything i always give them a little bit of a sanding before i use a stamp set but that's literally like you open the package you prime sand it and then you're done you never have to do it again so <clears throat> kind of just do what comes natural there too um, ink. You could use something like archival ink in jet black. You could use the IOD ink in black as well. I'm opting to go with the IOD just because it is a thicker ink and because you've got way more tooth and like inconsistencies in the actual texture of this, I think that I'm going to get a better printing of it. So as I said, I'm just going to kind of come in and ink up the swag. It's not so much the angel as it is the swag of flowers in that pretty little kind of crest looking shape there. Just get it good and juicy. And then we're just gonna kind of line this up at the top. And I love these stamps. I don't know about you guys, but like, again, when, when I was younger, it was always the block, wood block stamps with the red rubber, which fantastic stamp designs, but my hands <laughs> hurt like crazy after I'm done using them. So these, you just kind of give a gentle pressing and tickle with your fingers and you're good. So I'm not super worried about every detail coming through here because what I'm going to do is actually paint over this with like a white paint or a white gesso, and then we're gonna come in and watercolor it. So we're just kind of giving ourselves a general shape of what's gonna happen. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is add a border because I really, really like to frame off my projects. Go ahead and heat set the ink. Okay, so we're just going to squeeze a little more white paint into a cup and we're going to paint in this really, really ornate design here.
Okay, so now that we have stamped and painted our entire border with white, and you might be asking, well, why did you do that? I mean, what was the whole point of that? And there are going to be times when you are creating that you don't necessarily want the decoupaged background to show up. You want your stamped image to show up more crisply. And by whiting out, you give yourself that flexibility. So that's why I prefer to kind of do that. And then on top of that, I'm going to do um, some clear gesso, or if you happen to have it, clear transparent watercolor ground is my absolute favorite. I use the Daniel Smith one, but you can use whatever you happen to have. But most of us have something like clear gesso, so... It works out really nicely. That way the entire decoupaged image becomes watercolor friendly. And you can just sort of let the watercolor kind of do its magic if it runs down your page. And I, I'm gonna let it kind of run down a little bit here. So I'm going to go ahead and re-ink this entire swag of flowers again. This time though we have to be a little bit more careful because we want to try to get it lined back up with our white silhouette. Don't push too hard. This should just be kind of a light pressure and I kind of just go through and gently press my fingertips anywhere that the stamp is sitting. And then you end up getting this ridiculously cool, super, super high detailed with the white background. All of this border is blocked out and it's just really, really fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed dry all of this up and then we're gonna do a coat of clear transparent watercolor ground or clear gesso, whichever you happen to have. Okay, so we went ahead and heat set all of the ink. Now we're gonna go ahead and come in with our transparent watercolor ground. And as I said, this one happens to be Daniel Smith, but I believe Golden makes one too. And watercolor ground, for lack of a better word, you guys, is watercolor gesso, okay? So just go crazy. Cover the entire surface because you don't know what you're gonna be inspired to watercolor. And for me, it's not so much that like I'm planning on painting anything on this pretty little background. Royce's paper already kind of does a lot of that for me. It's got so much beautiful interest on here. But what I do like to incorporate is splatter. So if I splat with watercolor, I don't want it to accidentally reactivate and or not be able to like settle into the paint and sort of become part of the project. With watercolor, it needs something to kind of have, um, it needs something with tooth so that it can absorb onto or into. So the watercolor gesso just basically gives you the tooth that you need to do that. And I basically just did all of that with what was on the lid. And then you really wanna make sure that you immediately after cap off your product and wash your brush really well because the ground behaves a lot like um, glue. So just make sure that you get that off of your brush really well. In fact, I only use my mixed media brushes with that. Don't use really high quality brushes. And again, just go ahead and dry this up completely and we'll be ready to go ahead and watercolor this. All right, so I went ahead and pulled out my watercolors. I happen to be a Daniel Smith girl, but you guys can use whatever paints you have. Um, and inevitably somebody always asks, oh my gosh, where did you get the triple decker um, tray? And it's basically a little girl's lip smacker um, chapstick container. And I'm pretty sure this one was, yeah, this one was like a frozen, nature is magic. <laughs> um, and if you just put your half pans with little magnets on the back of them, they stay put and you don't have to worry about it. And they just close up nice and neat. And then if you wanna just kind of like spray paint and do image transfer, or whatever you want on your tin, you can. So that's what I have my paints in. 
and I like being playful with color. So I'm just gonna sort of start off with some of my favorites. Um, one of my absolute favorite colors is a color called Quin Deep Gold, and it's just got the most wonderful punch and sunshine to it, so I use that a lot. And I'm just gonna kind of add a lot of color. I just rinsed my brush, and with water, I'm gonna come in and kind of scooch that paint around. And I don't wanna paint the whole thing. You know, I don't want it to be like color by numbers or like when we were kids coloring from line to line and filling it all in. I'm extremely uh, responsive to elements of white still left behind. So I'm just gonna kind of let that be a little. And then I'll kind of tuck a little of that wonderful color up into the top of these swagged areas that didn't necessarily have a stamped design. A little bit of water, again, just kind of pushing that darker value of color around. And I'm a very loose painter. I like having colors bleed and blend and not being terrified of things touching, so it's, it's totally okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of Quinn Rose to a few of the flowers in here. Again, not being super careful not worrying if it touches another color and happens to bleed into it. That is the beauty of watercolor. Not controlling, just letting it do what it wants to do. I'm kind of thinking we need a little bit of green. One of my favorites is called Rich Green Gold. And there are no like full on leaves in this pattern, but we can suggest all we want just by simply adding little bits of green through some of this swag. I'm pretty sure that those were all probably flowers and it's okay. A little bit of ultramarine turquoise just because it's such a beautiful and vibrant color. And because I like that color so much, I'm gonna touch a little bit in this kind of crest design. There are striated lines in here to kind of suggest that there was more shadow in this aspect or this portion of the little plaque. So I'm just kind of touching some of that in to suggest a bit of shadow in there as well. And as I told you, I'm a big fan of splatter. So I'm just gonna fill up one of these colors probably the Quin Deep Gold, because as I said, it's a favorite. And I'm just gonna come in and start splatting a little bit on my page. But then I'm gonna rinse my brush and come in with a fully loaded, this whole belly of the brush is loaded with water. And if I splat that water right on top, you can see how all of that concentrated splatter kind of blooms out and creates the most delicious little washes and splats of color. And they're all a variety of different sizes, which makes it even more interesting, right? And then to make it cohesive, we'll throw in a little bit of that ultramarine turquoise. You can even kind of scumble some of those just by touching them and letting them merge and marry with the Quin Deep Gold. You'll end up getting some gorgeous greens in there because you're essentially mixing a yellow and a blue, right? And then so that it all feels like it's tied together, we'll do a little of that down here as well. Again, rinse your brush, come back in with water and splat right over. I'm even gonna just simply add little puddles of water right on top of that surface. Come back in with a little of the ultramarine turquoise 
all while this Quin Deep Gold is still wet. So you're essentially getting that really delightful wet into wet effect. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and dry this completely. Okay, so the watercolor's dry, and it's time to actually like seal it. Because you know as well as I do, watercolor is going to reactivate if you happen to like throw another layer of something on top of it. So I have two different fixatives that I basically use interchangeably, whatever I decide to work on. Workable fixative is my absolute favorite, but it's super, super stinky, and I have to go outside. So when I'm working in my studio and I don't want to have to go outside, um, you know, it's obviously not the best one to use but it's a one-time kind of use so like once you spray this puppy you're good you can go ahead and start adding other layers on top of it without reactivating all those watercolor layers there's the other one which is spectrafix dig off fixative now this one is odor free non-toxic all natural all media and it's meant for things like soft pastels and oil pastels things that are going to reactivate but this one is a pump tip and um, pump head, I should say, and you can use it inside. It's not super stinky, but you have to spray this puppy about two to three times. If you're using your heat tool to dry in between, it's really not that big of a deal. You just decide what works best for you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and spray a light mist for the first one. And again, that is just the Spectrafix um, fixative and then dry it up and then I can spray it again dry and then spray a third time and then I'm golden. I can just basically work over this and not worry about it reactivating. And I very intentionally did not speed up this segment because I wanted you to see how fast that was. It really dries quickly, which is great. You're not flooding the surface you're just lightly misting the surface. That's it. So from here, if you want to carefully and gently peel back your painted borders, you can kind of get a better sense and if some of your decoupage paper got stuck to your tape, just be careful because it could rip up some of the design. This one got good and stuck in here. Absolutely crazy about the burlap frayed edges. It's one of my absolute favorites. Just super, super yummy, right? Love that. And then if you want to kind of like come in here and actually like fray a little bit more, you can and kind of wake some of these ones up at the top too. I like all of these little tenderly bits sort of like hanging around. So they're really fun. The last thing I'm going to do is add a couple other things. So I think I'm going to add one of the Tim Holtz specimen like stamps inside of this label. And then I'm going to also come in with my Posca markers and start doodling and adding some other fun elements. All right, so this is one of the Tim Holtz specimen stamps. I'm crazy about this one. Some of it's gonna actually stick out past the label a little bit, but that's okay. Give your Pascas a good shake always fun to kind of come in and add a few little pops of color and doodles and you can really just come in and get crazy if you wanted to add like a crown you could totally do that with your little bird And I'm, I don't know about you guys, but like there are certain colors that I feel like they're fantastic when it comes to um, reintroducing color and detail into a project. But I love this kind of turquoisey color 
as well as fluorescent pink. It's just one of those combos that makes me really happy. And on this little sort of beaded border that we added in, you can add little circles or whatnot. The other thing too is like if your stamp design was inconsistent or not perfect, it's a great way to kind of like go back in and doodle it and finish it up a little bit. But this for me, it's just making the whole piece cohesive. You see this turquoisey looking color in the actual watercolor at the top. So I'm just drawing it all together. And I'm not necessarily even doing every single one. Love stippling dots. You can do stuff like going in and adding like a bit more reflection to the bird's eye. If you happen to like lose some of the detail, you could add wing detail in here. But again, I like the distressing. I don't want it to be super perfect. Even add in like some little dew drops on the leaves that are sort of hanging in here. Do those with white. You know, you could totally reintroduce white on this problem. Uh, project and it would come out great. Carefully you can peel back the parchment paper. Some of this is going to get stuck to your burlap and that's okay. Just make sure that before you close this off in your journal that you dry the back side of it so that it doesn't accidentally get stuck to the other side of one of your other pieces. But then there you have it. You've got a fun little mixed media watercolor on decoupage on a heavily textured journal page which is burlap and we just had an absolute blast i hope you guys enjoyed that and thanks so much for watching and i'll see you next time